Good evening, welcome to the Planning Commission. The date is Monday, January 27th. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank everyone for coming out on this cold night. Uh, we'll start with the actual approval of tonight's agenda. Anyone have any uh, concerns with tonight's agenda? Mr. Chairman, move to approve tonight's agenda. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Moving on, we have the approval for the minutes for the January 13th, 2014 meeting. Does anyone have any changes they need to make at all? Mr. Chairman, move to approve the minutes for the January 13th, 2014 meeting. Second. We have a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody need to abstain? I abstain. Okay. Anybody else? Julie, you're okay? Okay. With that, we have several public hearings um, tonight, and I want to uh, turn it over to Mr. Franz, and he wanted to make a quick statement and kind of remind everyone not only out in the audience tonight, but the viewing public along with the commissioners on what our duty tonight is and what we'll be reviewing. So Mr. Franzen, if you would take, that would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission, the MAC development parcels started discussions back in 2010. And the question before the city and the MAC was, who has the authority over regulating non-aeronautical uses at the airport. We believe, based upon the opinion from our attorney, that we had some authority in that area to have projects go through a normal review process. MAC had a different point of view that they had the authority to build according to what they wanted to do. Rather than going through a court process in front of a judge, the city and the MAC decided to enter into a <coughs> memorandum of understanding. And the purpose of this was to establish a two things, a mutually agreeable review process, and we're kind of in the middle of that now, and the second part was to establish regulations. So a little bit more than a year ago in October, the city council uh, approved the guide plan change in which we designated parcels two through seven for either airport commercial or airport office. So those sites are officially part of our guide plan as areas where those uses can occur. The second part was to create the zoning districts and the district standards by which we will evaluate the site plans when those come in front of the commission and the council in the future. And basically the rules and regulations for airport commercial and airport office are the same for commercial or office anywhere else in the city. Seem to make sense to us if we have high standards for those properties, we should apply those same standards out here. The second part of the public process is the rezoning process, and that's what we're here to do this evening. Now normally this planning commission would see the site plan review and the zoning at this time, but this was part of the agreement we had with Matt that we were gonna separate the process. So you're gonna look at the rezoning of the property tonight. Even though there are concept plans that are in your packet, I think those concept plans are helpful. I think they give us all an idea of what airport and commercial and airport office might look like at some point in the future. So they've indicated plans for all properties except I think it's site number five and that's next to the Super America. We can get into that discussion later. And as we looked at each of these projects, we took a look at it related to natural features. There's some bullet points in the staff report as to whether there's an impact or not. And we also looked at the extent to which we could determine whether or not these proposals were actually in conformance. When we look at our staff recommendations, some of the parcels we recommend rezoning the entire parcel. And those are the commercial parcels three, four, five, and seven. Because basically their development proposals take up the entire site and we don't have wetlands, floodplains, shoreland, trees, or slopes to deal with. When we get into sites two and six, those are the office sites. Two is on the west end towards Eden Prairie Road. Six is on the east end of the property on the other side of Flying Cloud Drive. 
In those reports, the staff recommends that we zone a smaller area. We zone an area that matches the amount of land we think is necessary to do the development concepts that they've proposed. And also we think that's a good fit when it's next to residential. And it also makes some sense in order to minimize the intrusion on steep slopes, wetlands, flood lakes, creeks, and trees. We scheduled six public hearings. Uh, Mac is here to give a short presentation on what the request is. In other words, what the zoning is being changed to. They'll show the concept plans and the concept elevations so everybody who hasn't seen those, either on camera tonight or people that just came down for the first time, can get an idea about where the site is, where the zoning change is, and what the development plans are. Then I will go to the staff recommendations and talk about the conditions of approval on a site-by-site -site basis as part of the public hearings. Okay, thank you very much. So just to be clear, we're not necessarily discussing what will be built on the land, but we are just discussing about the rezoning. So I just want to make that clear so all the commissioners understand. Okay, with that being said, we'll go to our first public hearing. As by the Metropolitan Airport Commission, the location is Flying Cloud Airport, and the request for MAC development parcel 2 will be zoning district change from rural to airport office on 39 acres. With that being said, will the proponent of the project please come forward and tell us a little bit about the project, please. Can you also state your name, spell your last name uh, for city record as well. Mr. Chairman, Commission members, thank you for having us here tonight. My name is Bridget Reef, R-I-E-F. I am the Director for Airport Development with the Metropolitan Airports Commission. I would like to utilize your document cam if that's acceptable. Yes, please. Is that's that quite fine. Yep, thank that would you. be a great point. If you can grab that microphone and just speak right into it, that'd be great. And then there's a camera camera up above that can uh, highlight the documents there. All right, Mr. Chairman and Commission members, uh, we are looking at parcel number two. It is located. <clears throat> if you can grab that microphone, just speak right into it. We'll hear you a little bit better. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Parcel number two, as stated by uh, uh, Mike Franzen, is located west of the airport, uh, adjacent to Eden Prairie Road. <clears throat> Mac is requesting that the airport be rezoned from airport to airport office. The site itself uh, is quite large, however, uh, a good chunk of it is not um, very desirable when it comes to development because of the creek, because of uh, the existing side slopes and some of those issues. So we did lay out a couple of concepts, <clears throat> and both of them uh, pretty much utilize the north end of the site. That is uh, by far the best opportunity for development. Uh, we wouldn't expect um, developers to come forward with much capability or much potential for the remaining portion of the site. So we have two different concepts. One is an office concept that butts into the back of the hill with parking out in front. The concepts are just a little bit, this one's just a little bit larger to give you an idea of what we're looking at. And in plan view, this is a rendering of what we expect it might look like from the road. Uh, again, low profile, uh, backed up into the hill, uh, not a lot of tree removal, not a lot of site grading associated with this concept. And again, as Mike Franzen indicated, these are just concepts, uh, something for you to take a look at, uh, something that we uh, would envision a developer would consider um, when coming forward for the site. The second concept is similar, only with a much larger building. Uh, this is a three to four story building. You can see it has a much higher profile. It still uh, fits within the city's um, height restrictions, uh, fits within airport height restrictions as well. Um, again, butts back into the hill, but does uh, present a much higher profile.
again, just to give you an idea of, again, a concept of what it might look like. Uh, from our standpoint, um, office is the concepts. Office development is uh, much more likely than commercial in this particular location. We work to abide by the uh, suggested uh, setbacks and uh, uh, development requirements that Mike and his staff have worked with us on and would ask that the commission please consider our request to, re to rezone. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Okay, thank you. Mr. Franzen, do you have anything to add from a staff perspective? Um, actually, I'd just like to go over the uh, staff recommendation. Uh, recommendation number one was rezoning that portion of the property located north of the line. It's called runway 10L slash 28R. So on the exhibit, it's probably the yellow line that's the closest to the uh, buildings that are part of the concept plan. And the second condition is any site plan application that comes forward in the future would conform to all of the requirements of the city code. Now, the city code requirement um, have actual mathematical requirements such as setbacks and parking requirements and building height. But the city also has qualitative requirements which are part of a normal site plan review. And um, the code actually has sort of nine sort of conditions that we're supposed to evaluate. And one of the key things when you look at the site plan has to do with the transition, the relationship between the proposed use and uses that are in the area. And what we try to do is um, where there's a difference in land use or the building intensity we either use uh, smaller site coverage, larger setbacks, berms, landscaping, anything to minimize you know, the visual impacts that you might see when you have office next to residential. I think perhaps maybe only our, our chairman might recall the uh, office buildings that are on Aztec Drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's where the car wash is and the daycare and you've got the Amico station on the corner we put in some one-story office condos there. They're next to residential. Now, granted, it's a smaller scale. The houses were close behind at about 75 feet. We did put a berm in between. We put in some landscapings. We made it a residential character. And that was the way we dealt with residential next to office uses. And that would be a similar approach and guidance and direction we would give to any developer coming in on either of the two offices. Uh, one quick question I have, I guess we're seeing staff whoever uh, wants to take this. Look like for the concept plans, at least for plan one and plan two, you talk about uh, nine acres out of the 39 acres. Do we anticipate whatever goes in there is gonna be around that amount, nine, 10, 11 acres? Um, um, I would say given the footprint of the building, the amount of area you need for parking, uh, be able to work with some of the existing grade on the site and then to fit in the stormwater. I think you're gonna need an area of about that size to do that. It might be smaller. The building could be a little bit bigger, could be a little bit smaller. Okay, but around that same size as Small far as developable the property there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, commissioners, do you have any other comments or concerns about just, parcel? Just two? curious, do we have any sense that eventually all of this parcel would be developed? Is this the first phase, or are we thinking this is pretty much all the development of this particular parcel we're talking about for a while? Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, our expectation is that this would be the only portion that would be developed. The rest of the site just really isn't conducive to it. Is really what, I'm sorry? Really isn't conducive to Might not be able future to develop development. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, anything else to? Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, very quickly, it uh, looks like the Magellan pipeline runs through on the southern portion in a northeasterly fashion. What are kind of mitigative factors uh, within the new proposed zoning classification are there for that, for variances or, or uh, setbacks or anything like that? We don't have any in our zoning code, but there would be building code requirements relative to the location of where the center line of that is. Is that of any concern or we, we, we've developed around the Magellan pipeline west of there in residential areas uh, being an office commercial, is that any concern? Uh, yes, we have. Okay. 
Anything else from anybody? Seeing that this is a public hearing, does anyone have any comments or concerns specific to this parcel two? Yes, ma'am, please come forward. Please state your name, uh, spell your last name, and give your address, please, for the commission. Carol Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, 16200 Hilltop Road. And this is just some trivia about that hill. I want you to know that there is a name for that hill. When we moved here in 1966, all of the kids that grew up on Valley Road and Hilltop Road, that was their sliding hill. The only problem was, at the bottom, there was a barbed wire fence. And if you didn't stop, before you got to that fence, you are Hamburger. That is Hamburger Hill. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Is there anybody else out in the audience that has any comments or concerns? Okay. Not seeing any, I will entertain a motion for parcel number two. Mr. Chair, move to close public hearing. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chair, move to recommend approval of the zoning district change from rural to airport office subject to the following conditions. Rezoning only that portion of the property located north of the line identified as runway 10L28R as shown on figures C1.1 and C2.1. Prior to city council review, MAC will provide a legal description for that portion of parcel two and any site plan application will conform to all requirements of the city code. A motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we'll move on. The second one will be for uh, parcel number three. This too is by the Metropolitan Airport Commission. The location again is Blind Cloud Airport. This one is for the zoning district change from rural and public to airport commercial on 3.04 acres. So with that being said, um, the proponent may now uh, talk to us about parcel number three. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Parcel 3 is located at the corner of, uh, flank of uh, Eden Prairie Road, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, at the corner of Mitchell Road and Pioneer Trail. It is, uh, this one is considered to be our highest potential for development. Uh, we have two concepts again for this particular parcel. And I'd like to note that we have worked with the city in the past to um, provide a sanitary and sewer to this particular site, so that is already in existence. One of the concepts includes uh, retail on this particular site, along with the potential for a uh, convenience store gas station, if you will. In plan view, we would, uh, uh, we have developed this concept to look like similar, uh, more recent uh, convenience store developments within the city of Eden Prairie. Uh, again, to have the covered canopy uh, connecting to uh, the building, um, providing a car wash. Um, we think this would be a fabulous amenity next to the athletic fields uh, in this particular location. The other concept we have is uh, just pure uh, retail in uh, one or two different locations on the site. Uh, small strip mall type of development opportunity here. Uh, our intent would be to leave it open to developers to make a determination as to what they think would be the best fit uh, in this particular site. Uh, the Airports Commission is requesting that this parcel be rezoned from airport to airport commercial. And with that, we'll stand for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Franz, you want to take us to the staff report, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Before I get to the uh, condition of approval, I just want to reiterate the orientation of the building uh, is consistent with the city code. When we created the airport commercial district, we also created some qualitative and site plan standards for how you would design a convenience gas store to fit in since we had residential across the street. And one of the, the the big parts of that change in the code was putting the building towards the intersection, putting the canopy towards the rear, creating the residential character so you can downplay the lights because that's usually one of our 
common criticism that's coming from gas station areas how bright they are during the evening hours. The staff recommendation uh, for this is to rezone the entire parcel to airport commercial with the condition that any site plan application would conform to all of the requirements of city code. Okay, thank you very much. One question I have as far as this parcel, Mr. Franzen, would just be parking. Is there enough to, anything that would go in there? Do you think there's enough room to be able to put any kind of parking requirements that the city would have? Uh, both of those plans currently conform to the city parking requirements. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions as far as parcel number three goes? I don't. Mr. Woody, do you have anything? Okay. Seeing that this is a public hearing, is there anybody out in the audience that has any comments or concerns specifically to parcel number three? Okay. Not seeing any. With that being said, I will entertain a motion for parcel three. Mr. Chairman, move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, move to recommend approval of the zoning district change from rural and public to airport commercial on 3.04 acres subject to the following condition any site plan application will conform to all requirements of the city code second motion and second all in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed okay moving on to parcel number four this again is by the metropolitan airport commission the location again is flying cloud airport and the request is for a zoning district change from public to airport commercial on 4.53 acres and with that being said will the metropolitan council take us through that one as well please Chairman and Commissioners, this parcel is located um, north of our north building area along Pioneer Trail. Um, it is very similar in size and our concepts are uh, fairly identical to parcel number three uh, with two uh, potentials, one being the potential for a convenience store gas station, the other being uh, for retail. Again, included on the website and in your packets, we have the retail sites. Uh, this site in particular would require a little bit of uh, fencing and separation from the uh, active areas of the airport. You can see our hangar areas here. We would have to ensure that there is public access to the development parcel and that uh, our airport tenants would maintain their secure access to the airfield. So again, Concepts matching uh, the city's code for brick and mortar, landscaping, that kind of thing. Uh, but again, very similar to retail, uh, small strip mall, um, or in this case, uh, for our second concept, the retail uh, and gas station concept here. So, very similar in look. With that, we will, uh, I'd like to, um, Mac would like to request uh, this parcel be rezoned from airport to airport commercial. That will stand for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Franz, with that being said, will the city take us to uh, parcel number four, please? Uh, parcel number four, the staff recommendation is for rezoning to airport commercial with the requirement that any site plan application would conform to all requirements of the city code. Okay. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have any questions? I do, Mr. Chair, and yes, sir, maybe I should have uh, asked this earlier, but it would still uh, apply on the uh, most recent, the other parcel three. Are there uh, traffic studies that have been performed in the past on commercial or retail properties that have access from park land and what kind of traffic patterns there are within the city borders? Um, I think for the convenience retail that's adjacent to the intersection at Mitchell Road, we probably would want to take a look at the intersection and the signal to see whether or not the additional trips that are generated by that would require some improvements to that. Um, my guess is that given the volume of traffic on the road now and the amount of volume you can have with four lanes of traffic on Pioneer Trail, I wouldn't anticipate that the amount of traffic coming from commercial development of that size would trigger road improvements? Yeah, I was just, 
because this is another access point to that same big park location right right here and I don't know the distance it maybe looks like 600 feet or so from the intersection of Pioneer Trail and uh, and the access road whatever they call it starting lane um, I'm just curious to know if there's been any other locations in the city that have similar nature to this and what kind of traffic considerations there have been placed with that Um, on the on both parcels three and four, um, I mean you mentioned that they take access from park roads, which are actually unmacked properties. So they're um, they're they're constructed um, by with with park use in mind as well. Um, but I don't think the each each of these sites, when they do come in for development, we will ask for a traffic study to determine what kind of volumes they anticipate for that use. And we would look at that, that spacing that might be needed for um, the section or the setback from the intersection, so that we do have some storage on the on parcel four. There looks like to be there would, would be plenty of storage based on the the access location that they're showing. Uh, parcel three may be a little tighter, and we may have to look at that a little closer, particularly with whenever the the peaks are for the park use versus whatever the use may be. If it's a gas station, for example. We would look at that as part of the traffic study. That was it. That was just a concern about being so close to a uh, heavily park uh, traffic parking area and a park with a lot of kids that are going to be traveling back and forth and running and not thinking so much about the commercial aspect of being so close. But um, as long as there's due diligence and, and care, which we've always had, and staff is very good at doing that, um, it's just a Thank concern. You. Very good. Duly noted. Seeing as a public hearing, is there anyone out in the audience that has any comments or concerns specific to parcel number four? Okay, not seeing any commissioners, any last comments or concerns? If not, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chair, move to recommend approval of the zoning district change from public to airport commercial on 4.53 acres, subject to the following condition. Any site plan application will conform to all requirements of city code. Second. The motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Moving on to parcel number five. Again, this is by the Metropolitan uh, Airport Commission. The location is Flying Cloud Airport, and the request is for a zoning district change from public to airport commercial on 0 0.45 acres. With that being said, the airport commission may uh, take the microphone, please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and commissioners, uh, parcel five is so tiny that it hardly shows up on our map here. It is located at the entrance of the Super America. Um, we, are, we did not provide any concept plans for this particular um, parcel. It is really too small to, ha to house any type of development, however. We are asking for the rezoning so that it can uh, be combined with parcel number seven as far as um, a site for drainage uh, potentially or um, some other use in order for us to move forward with that particular parcel we want to have uh, the rezoning take place. So not that we would develop it on its own, uh, but have the ability to uh, combine it with, as I said, site drainage or something along those lines. You don't anticipate putting any kind of building structure on there at all? Uh, Mr. Chairman, no. All right, thank you very much. Mr. France, you want to take us through the staff report, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, there is some development potential, but it's extremely small. It's about 1,500 square feet. So there aren't too many uses that go into a building uh, that's that small. I think that um, a very good use of the property is using that for drainage purposes because there is development proposed as part of uh, Parcel 7, which is across the uh, street that they share a frontage with. Our staff recommendation is that any site plan application would conform to the requirements of the city code with the granting of a favor or variance for the lot size requirement for the airport commercial zoning district. Okay. Uh, anything else from the commission members at all? Does anybody have any comments or concerns? No, not seeing any. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody out in the audience that has any comments or concerns specific to parcel number five. 
Okay, not seeing any. With that being said, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Inter Chairman, move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, move to recommend approval of the zoning district change from public to airport commercial on 0 0.45 acres subject to the following condition. Any site plan application will conform to all requirements of the city code with the granting of a waiver or a variance to the lot size requirement for the A through C zoning district. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, moving on. I'm guessing this is going to be the main event for tonight. Uh, we move on to the MAC development parcel number six by the Metropolitan Airport Commission. Location of this project again is Flying Cloud Airport and the request is for a zoning district change uh, from rule and rule 1-13.5 to airport office on 20.02 acres. With that being said, uh, the proponent can uh, go ahead with their presentation. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, thank you. Uh, this parcel is located uh, east of the airfield. Uh, it is the second of the two airport office sites that we are considering tonight. Similar to parcel number two, <coughs> this site has a significant amount of topography, a uh, significant amount of landscaping, and in uh, a number of ways there are um, portions of the site that are not conducive to development. So we did take that into account when we looked at our concepts. Uh, we are basically looking at an office suite type of development, uh, single type residential looking uh, structures that would house one, maybe two uh, businesses a piece. Um, again, given the topography, uh, we would be looking at something um, rather spread out, uh, tucked back into the hill um, on the north side up here. Um, Again, kind of tucked into the back of the hill down on the southern end of the site. Uh, the existing wetland area, we would not be touching that at all uh, with regard to the development. Um, and we wouldn't allow a developer to do that at any rate anyway. Um, this is a concept similar to what we're seeing in, uh, in this community <coughs> and other communities uh, for uh, whether they're um, dentist offices or small um, H&R block type businesses, you name it. Second concept that we developed um, focuses on the north end of the parcel. And again, uh, that it really gets to um, how much a developer wants to um, wants to get into overall development. If you look at this first concept, we're looking at, it, it's a very long entrance road. Um, there's a significant amount of construction for a relatively small amount of square footage at the south end. Um, we wouldn't be surprised if somebody wouldn't be interested in putting money into that kind of a development, but we did want to show it as a potential. Um, it is possible. Um, it's gonna depend on what, uh, what developers see as being viable out there. Um, looking at the northern end of the site, again, this would be similar office suite kind of concepts, uh, a little more concentrated, tucked into the back of the hill. Um, and this would be the view from the road for this particular concept. So the Airports Commission is requesting a rezone to uh, airport office, and with that, we'll stand for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Franzen, you want to take us through the... Uh Staff report, and if you have any back history to uh, some of these emails, which are which we have in front of us, commissioners, do you have all these emails too? It's about parcel number six as well. Um, can you give us any color if you have any for this? Um, I, th I think a lot of those comments that are in the email came out during the public hearing process from some of the residents that were adjacent to this site. Um, I think I probably had some part in how that went together because I went out with one of property owners and and walk the property to get kind of a, a feel for the flavor of the lay of the land and the topography and the trees. So I think that, that that's where that, that comes from. Um, this is kind of an interesting uh, two set of choices for the property, though we're not really talking about approving one plan or the other. It, it goes to how much prop this property should we rezone? 
you can look at it one of two ways. You can either zone the entire property, you have smaller buildings that are spread out. And I would say that the office suites that they have on here are going to be <clears throat> very similar to the office suites that you see on Aztec Drive. Um, the closest example I can think of to a 16,000 square foot two story building, it's actually a retail building. It's where Punch Pizza is mm -hmm. um, over by the mall. So that would give you kind of a three dimensional representation of what that would be. And those buildings, you know, for the most part throughout the development are somewhere around 300 feet from the adjoining um, single family residences on the property. And our view of this property, we took a similar approach to site two and recommended a smaller land area for the rezoning. We just felt that concentrating the development even though they were two-story, would still be conforming to the height requirement of less than 30 feet, and in a concentrated area, would leave more of the site left in its natural condition. Uh, that would be good for the wildlife, the topography, most of the residents in the area, uh, and I think that still provides a relatively good transition to the residential areas overall. The rezoning talks about uh, zoning the area north of runway 10R28L, and the reason we went to that southern line was we weren't quite sure exactly where the stormwater pond was going to be. The pond might be farther to the north, and we might end up with a more compact plan than even what we're seeing here. And the second condition is that any site plan application would conform to the requirements of the city code at that time they could bring in an actual land development application, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Franson. Uh, commissioners, do you understand fully when you go to page three of our staff report where he's talking about um, their under uh, staff recommendations number one and which part of that piece of property the city would like to leave alone versus what part of the property or the city would like to uh, rezone. Is everyone pretty much clear on that? It's clear. I just wanted, once again, uh, Mike, could you repeat the reason for only wanting to rezone that component is what again? I think a compact development on the property preserves more of the steep slopes, the significant trees, the non-significant trees. It stays away from the wetland areas and has a less overall visual impact. When you consider the length of the property, if you spread out the development, you have a greater visual impact over a greater length of the property, whereas a compact, concentrated, doing some berming and some landscaping, if you have to do any transitional type of development actions at the type of site plan review, it's easier to do when the buildings are closer together. So if I understand that correctly, as of this point in time, that would preclude under the first development concept, the more southern development of nine suites. That would be correct. Okay, thank you. I have one question on the, um, the second conceptual drawing that, um, I know there's conceptual, but it has the uh, parking um, going beyond that um, runway line. Is that a possibility? With the parking on the section, second conceptual drawing? I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. Um, the second conceptual drawing um, shows um, parking going beyond that runway line. Okay, there's, uh, <coughs> there's two runway lines. Right, the, uh, the north runway line? Yeah, we're looking at the south runway line for oh. what we would rezone. I see. I mean, it might be possible when they come in with a development plan that a developer may choose a different footprint may choose a different approach to the stormwater drainage. I see, okay. And so everything could shift farther to the north. Oh, thank you. So I you have wanted to leave enough room for a little flexibility in how you do the drainage that makes the most sense given the topography. Thank you. And then I guess one other question for um, Mac for the Metropolitan Airport Commission, and that is your reaction to this, the recommendation that the northernmost part of this parcel be rezoned and not the southernmost. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, um, as we've indicated in our looking at the site, uh, our expectation is that the northern part of the parcel is much more likely to be a potential candidate for development, um, and at this time wouldn't expect uh, that the southern end be highly desirable. Um, stating that, however, doesn't mean we might not come back at some point in time and request that the remaining portion of the parcel be redeveloped. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may ask a question? Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, coming back to the runway 10L 28R that uh, would, would eventually fly over the uh, parking lot of either uh, concept drawings, what is the distance from the end of that runway to in feet or quarter miles or however you uh, approximate? Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, the distance is approximately uh, 4,000 feet from the end of the North Parallel Runway. And that lies within the uh, safety zone A entirely, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, that is not correct. Okay. Uh, none of the parcels that we are proposing lie within zone A. Development is not allowed within zone A. Um, this oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, zone B, yeah, <laughs> the other one, yep. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, this map identifies in black the outlines for the proposed Zone B areas. Uh, development is allowed within Zone B under certain density requirements. Our proposal um, meets all of those um, without any issues, without any problems. So. so it looks as though staff's recommendation would be within a safety zone and the zone B more prudent. However, in the long-term development potential, the entirety would be a maximization of the yield of that property. So that, that's the trade-off. Right, from what I understand, Mr. Franzen, you're asking us um, to accept the, uh, what you were talking about, the, the 10R28L, and north of that would be zones as discussed and if they wanted to change that or another developer came in, we would have another conversation about developing the south side of that property. Is that, that accurate? Okay. Does everyone, does that make sense? Yeah. And I guess just one more question for, for Mac. I know it's early in the conceptual process, but if you look at the residential property that is to the east of the northern component of this parcel, um, it, has there been any discussion of the visibility of this commercial property to those folks who live in the residential property on the east side? It may be too early for that, but I'm just curious. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, we did actually take a look at that. Um, this site uh, works well for this northern development, primarily because there is a hill on the eastern end of the parcel. Mm -hmm. And so the structures that we would build would kind of butt back into that hill. Mm -hmm. uh, the, resident, the residences may be able to see um, rooftops potentially, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the height that we construct, but it provides a very nice buffer visually from the proposed development at this end, much more so than the uh, office suites that we looked at on the southern end of the parcel. And given that that hill is there, and I'm going to go out and want to go out and look at the property, given that that hill is there, does that off offer potentially, I know it's once again early, the opportunity to further shelter the visibility of the commercial property from the residential homes behind it to the, to the east? Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, um, that is something that we can take a look at in site plan review, um, determination of elevations and actual um, survey uh, will all take place at that time. Okay, thank you. Continuing on with that uh, <coughs> kind of dovetailing off of your question, that the hill and visual buffer from those that are on Tree Farm Road and uh, if we were to approve the entirety of the develop developable area, uh, Kirsten Place and Jasper Lane, would it be, what, what's the difference versus only approving north of the runway line and proving the entirety in the height of the structures that would be, that you'd be able to sprawl out as opposed to build high to maximize that use. Uh, have you looked at that, those numbers, as far as a visual standpoint and aesthetic standpoint from neighboring properties? 
Um, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, um, I'll look at uh, the rest of the staff that's here tonight if they want to add on to this. But at this point in time, I don't know that we've been comparing one option to another. Um, what we would be looking at doing is putting the site out. Uh, we would market the site and then have the developers do their own analysis to make a determination as to what makes the most sense, how compact they would want to build, what makes the most sense to them uh, from a development standpoint. And so I don't know that we would argue for one over the other or try to indicate here tonight that if we uh, zone an entire parcel that it would have an impact on what the northern site would ultimately look like. I'm just thinking a lot of the uh, public is probably going to be concerned with the aesthetic and the visual right. impairments to their own property. And if we were to go with the route of only half the parcel to be able to get a developer to want to come in and build something there and getting enough retail or enough commercial, I should say, commercial space uh, so that they could make their rate of returns, uh, it almost seems like we're kind of balancing the environment, we're balancing the aesthetics, and we're ba balancing the potential that it's actually going to become to fruition. So um, I'm figuring that, I mean, I'll table my comments till later, but uh, I'm figuring that that, the visual uh, impairment to neighboring property owners is going to be a, uh, a grave concern, and it should be. Mike, one, one last question on this. Um, from a city code standpoint, and it's a general question, but from a city code standpoint, where you have the prospect of commercial property directly abutting residential property, are there shielding requirements of any kind or um, any, is there anything in the city code that speaks to the issue of diminishing value of, of the residential property because of the direct abutment? Uh, not in terms of value, but it does talk in terms of visual impacts. So, you know, we would look to small building footprints. We'd look for a residential character. Uh, we look for larger setbacks relative to the property line. Um, there's a very dramatic landform on here, so it does present the opportunity on the northern end if the building and the parking is just kind of turned on a radius closer towards the runway, then you could put more of that building behind the hill. We have to kind of balance that with what is the design of the building and how far is it away from the residential areas. So if you had a 100,000 square foot building that was 100 people in the property, that would have a bigger impact. So the degree of transition buffering and screening is going to have to be greater. When you have smaller buildings that are approximately according to our measurements and it's on reduced graphics and about 300 feet, it's about a football field. You gotta get a feel for how big is that and how much do you actually have to offset and mitigate. Mm -hmm. And we won't know that until you see all of the detailed plans at a larger scale at the time they've actually identified a builder and we have architecture and landscape and sustainability plans that go with that. That's very helpful though because basically it does say the city code does address that issue um, and be something we want, certainly want to be talking about in the future as things go on. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. With that being said, uh, we can go to the open hearing portion for parcel number six. I want to iterate this is just for parcel number six. Also, it seems that there are uh, seven or eight people that are planning to speak uh, about this parcel and if you could please uh, Keep your comments, if, if there's more than one person about one particular comment or issue, I would uh, ask that, that we did hear you and that we kind of want to keep this moving along as best as we can, but the time is now yours. Is there anyone out in the audience that has any specific comments or concerns about parcel number six? If so, now would be the time to come forward. Would you please come state your name for city records, spell your last name, and then tell us about your concern. John Fedora, uh, that's F-E-D-O-R-A, and I'm at 9820 Tree Farm Road. Um, back when we purchased our house in 1991, we did come to the city and ask what was the disposition of the land behind us. 
And uh, we were told at the time that it was rural, that it was part of the safety zones, and it, that nothing could be built behind there. Um, we live directly under the runway path, and we also live very close to the so-called closed landfill. Um, that's kind of another story from this last year. It hasn't been very closed. Um, but we take that all as part of the compromise because as we look out our back door, um, we have a natural area that is full of wildlife, and it's our little part of Eden in Eden Prairie. And um, so, you know, kind of the first point is that to change the zoning is really breaking a promise that was made to us 20 plus years ago that nothing would be built in that land. Um, secondly is that from all the other parcels we've discussed this evening, this parcel is unique in that it is the only parcel that touches residential property. There's approximately 14 properties directly touching it and another five or so that are just have a small buffer of uh, parkland. So over 20 residences are impacted by this decision and um, it negatively impacts us as far as our quality of life and also financially because now if anybody tried to put their house on the market, all of a sudden there's a huge uncertainty as far as what's gonna happen behind there our values on all of our properties have just dropped. Um, and then I think the other thing that to keep in mind is that this is public land. The MAC is not a private developer. They are a public entity. And so I think that lens needs to be applied to that is what is the best use of public land for the public? And is an office development the greatest good for the greatest number of people? And I would say no. I think having the green space, the natural area, and also um, a wildlife sanctuary is more important than a couple of office buildings. It's also very impractical to build here from a technical standpoint. I don't know if any of you have walked that terrain, um, but it is extreme. It, it starts out, it drops down into a deep valley and then comes up again and then drops down into tree farm neighborhood. Um, it's just, it, it's ridiculous to try to develop it. Um, and the other thing with that terrain is when you start looking at the concept plan, the smaller concept plan that we were talking about at the northern end, the, um, the southern part of that, as it's shown, sits on top of the hill, and the northern part sits in the valley. So there's huge question on how that is gonna be, you know, proposed, and, you know, how that topography is gonna be addressed. Um, and then, also, if you notice, on the north end, uh, there's a house <laughs> less than, well, it's hard to say on the scale, but uh, about 100 feet away from uh, that proposed building. And so there's no buffering there. So I would ask you that Mac has asked for a lot, and you've given them a lot as far as um, you know, land to develop. I would ask you to not approve this because this land is not appropriate for development for the reasons I've stated. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and thank you for your emails as well. I've read through them and I appreciate your time. Is there anybody else that has any comments or concerns about parcel number six? If so, now would be the time. I know there was a, a pretty good list. I'm just wondering. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, Brian Reed, REID, address to Kirsten Place. Uh, don't want to be repetitive. I want to really just echo. This is a unique 
plot, it butts up against residential. Uh, the other ones don't. Um, absolutely agree with what the, the gentleman said. Uh, that needs to be taken into consideration. You've approved five out of six. Uh, they have plenty of space to go develop. Leave this one alone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that has any comments or concerns out in the audience? Okay, Mr. Franzen, do you have any uh, closing comments for parcel number six? I do not, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, any more discussion that we need to have? Well, I, I guess I, I, I have a couple questions that uh, the comments that were just made raised. So one option, of course, is that there be no development what, whatsoever on this parcel and it doesn't get rezoned. Um, I think I heard that um, to some degree from one of, the, one of you folks who came up and talked to us. We've talked about the city code helping to protect visibility of a development, and I wonder if there's an opportunity for MAC to work with neighbors in the area to the satisfaction of both, and would be interested in any comments people had. Or is the position that, uh, of the folks who are making comments, and maybe some of the rest of you in the audience, that we desire no development there whatsoever? I guess what I'm asking is, is there an opportunity for mutual work together between Mac and some of you folks to satisfy both parties. I don't know if anybody will answer that. <laughs> yeah, from my perspective anyway. Uh, so I'm, I'm the house on Kirsten Place uh, at the end of the cul-de-sac, the second one over. I, I look over this whole area. Mr. Reed, can you point your house? I'm just curious on the map right over there, if you can just walk over there, please. Great, great. okay, thank you. So I, I, I look over, if you can return to the podium just so our audience can hear you, that would be great. But you're in that cul-de-sac right down there. The I'm bottom. in that cul-de-sac, and, and, and we're up high. Right, we're on a hill, so I look over that that whole space. Uh, you, the first proposal with the office coming in, coming down south. Uh, my bedroom window is is really pretty high, <laughs> and any buffer zone that you would try to create uh, would have to be significantly high to keep people in that office from looking into my house at whatever time of day, right? Uh, or me looking down really on a roof of a building. Uh, even the northern plot, I, I'm gonna see. You, you can't hide it from me because we're up high. So uh, there is quite a bit of tree cover which will minimize that. And of course, the distance is further on that northern plot, um, but I, I'm gonna see it. And that's okay to some degree, right? I absolutely can work with, with someone to develop something. But when you start coming south, I, I get real concerned about having an office building that can just look right into my house. Well, if I understood um, the discussion we had earlier, following building on what you were just saying, the recommendation of the city planning group is that that southern development re would really not occur because they, we would only rezone the northern portion yep. of the parcel. So I, I like that whole conversation. So uh, because I'm on the south end. Sure. But I empathize with the people on the north end, and if if I were on the north end, I would have difficulty with that. And um, just a couple more things to maybe get anybody's reaction on. I mean. Once again, one possibility is that there's no development whatsoever, right? So that the property stays just as it is today. Another option is that there is a development, but it's a, it's a development that takes into account the concerns of residents. And based on an earlier comment that I think um, the folks from MAC made, the visibility may be minimized not only by the hill, but by additional effort based on uh, trying to minimize that visibility. So. 
Another option is that development occurs, but it, develop, it occurs more in line with the um, interests of the neighbors and the people in the homes around there. And I wonder what your reaction to that second option is. So I'm open. If you, if you step back, uh, they're, they're throwing out six or seven plots to have rezoned to uh, commercialize yep. and, and generate some revenue for MAC, right? Uh, you can have a whole discussion around that topic alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you've already approved five out of the six or four out of the six. We'll get to one more. This is the only one that butts up against residential property. To me, it, it's almost a no-brainer. Let the other ones go. They don't butt up against residential. MAC will get what they want, but leave what butts up against residents for the purpose that it was stated 20 some years ago when that gentleman moved in. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, just speaking to, so, sir, do you have another comment you'd like to make? Please go ahead. Yeah, I guess. Um, Mr. Fedora, is that uh, correct? Mr. Fedora. Okay. Um, just to reiterate, is that you know the ideal situation is no development, and we've we've discussed that, and because that is the original deal, and um, but you know worst case scenario, uh, yeah, working with the neighborhood makes a lot more sense than just shoving it down our throats. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that last part again, working with the neighborhood and what? It's, instead of just, you know, stomping on us and shoving it down our throats. Right. Um, so, yeah, a, a collaborative effort would be better than, than nothing. But, again, to reiterate, um, the choice of the, our neighborhood is, you know, you've granted MAC a lot to work with. This is the least desirable property it's the one that impacts the most people negatively from a quality of life and a financial standpoint um, let them develop the other ones first and just leave this one alone well I will say one thing I um, your comments have been terrific and insightful <coughs> I don't think anybody on the Commission has any interest in shoving anything down anyone's throat um, we want as many folks as possible to be satisfied in terms of, I mean, you live there, so exactly. it's, these are important considerations, so thank you. Yes, thank you. And, you know, if, at the very least, table it and come and walk the land. See how it fits in the neighborhood. See what we see. Um, I'll take anybody on a tour. Thank, thank you very you. much. Um, one question I have as far as uh, or to the airport commission, what's, what's your timeline for this property? Do you have one at all? What's your hopes, I guess, more than anything? Can you state your name, please, for us, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, uh, I'm Eric Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, -N, the director of commercial management and airline affairs for the Metropolitan Airports Commission. Um, we, we really don't have any specific timeline with this. Uh, obviously, we've been working through the city process. Our objective has been to work with the city, be on the same page as far as what the city was looking for, for development in each one of these parcels. Uh, we've been working through that process, and then we're hoping once we get that approval done to go out and start the marketing approach to try to find developers to come back and work with these parcels. And so from that perspective, we don't have any specific timeline. Obviously, we think uh, the uh, airport commercial sites are probably the more opportune uh, development opportunities associated with the rest of these. Um, my personal opinion is that uh, both, uh, both of the office uh, proposed sites would probably be the last, if any, of the ones to be developed out here just because right now that's probably the weakest part of the real estate market. So uh, from that perspective, I think that will be the slowest part of the development process. So parcel number six then would be one of the slower ones. Exactly. And do you have any thoughts or comments based on what you heard from some of the folks who live in that area? Um, you know, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, I, I would say, you know, the MAC has, has been going through this effort, obviously, to, to partner with the city and work with this the best way that we can so that 
what comes out of these developments is something that works within the, what the city has an idea for, what works for the community around it. And so from that perspective, I mean, obviously a developer is gonna have their own mindset of what they want to develop on a property, but that is one of the pieces that we would highlight in any of these pieces is to make sure that it's something that works within the community around it. And if it's something that we can get approved by everybody and everybody's satisfied moving forward, that's our goal out of this process. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always an interesting one and I appreciate um, everyone coming out here tonight. I think one thing that, you know, when trying to keep in mind of, you know, the process and how this goes, we appreciate the airport commission coming down and letting us actually be a part of, uh, of these hearings tonight and be able to go through this process and to be able to hear um, from the audience. And I can tell you that each commissioner does uh, understand and does uh, hear your concerns. But with that said, again, tonight, we're really just talking about the zoning piece of it. And I think that we can, as a commission, be more effective when plans and site uh, uh, plans come to us. And that, that is really the time when we can try to work with uh, the people that live close to that, uh, that piece of parcel of land to be able to start talking about height elevations and what works and what doesn't work and should we spread out, should we not, and all those kind of details to try to get you guys more comfortable um, for the residents that are living close to seeing what's going to be out there. Does that kind of make sense a little bit? Where tonight was really just kind of a zoning piece. Um, and they own the land and have every opportunity to be able to develop that land that they see fit and that they have come to the city and the city has asked that, that they be a part of that process. So that's kind of what we're doing uh, here tonight is to kind of meet hands kind of somewhere in the middle and to be able to decide what we can do from a city perspective, what they can do from their perspective and how we can make kind of everybody happy. So with that being said, I don't have any other following uh, comments. Uh, Mike, do you have anything to wrap up before we move forward with this? You know, the one thing I, I like about this process is it allows us all to be at the table. And I think that was our concern from the very beginning that we could be an active participant uh, with the residents and the commission and council in helping to shape how the property develops. And I think that's an important part for the city to remember. <coughs> Commissioners, do you have any, before we take this to a vote, do we have any um, concerns out there? Is anyone, I know we kind of struggle with this a little bit. I know I do personally, but uh, knowing kind of the backstory a little bit and what we've been asked to do tonight, does anybody have any real concerns with parcel number six? I think it's uh, safe to say that having a concept plan in front of you, sometimes you lose sight of the end goal. You know, you, you, you see the concept plan and then you get pigeonholed, you're like, oh, okay, and then the nitpicky nature of that, and right tonight we're just looking at zoning and you don't really even need a concept plan to look at zoning. As um, It's nice to have, because you can see what potential there is. And for this site, uh, it's been very, uh, very important for uh, being able to visualize the residents that are that are next to and their concerns with the the topography. And I think uh, the big question in my mind is, do being able to when a developer comes forward for a prelim plat and a final plat, do we want to limit the opportunity on the site to be able to keep the elevations low? and sprawl it out by cutting off half the site? Or do we want to cut off half the site so that we've got greater control in just, you know, and then the more open space? So that, that's the big question in my mind and I have 50-50. So let's talk about that because you brought that up before. Mr. Franzen, is there any, what's the kind of pros and cons if we just go through and do the whole site and just zone the whole thing versus just doing a part of it? I know staff's recommendation is only doing a part of it. Um, I hear Travis's concerns, you know, talk us through a little bit about the pros and cons. If we were doing the whole thing, which I know was kind of against what the city was asking for or what their uh, recommendation is, um, you know, Travis's comments make a lot of sense in that sense. Um, I know we could always go back later on and rezone the other, you know, fourth or third of the property, but talk us through kind of your recommendations and why you really came or why this city, uh, recommended only doing north of that uh, 10L28 or 10, uh, 10R28L line. 
Well, first, we want to be consistent in how we view office next to residential, no matter where it is in the city. So for us to take an approach and say that um, site number two, for example, we want to preserve more of the property and limit the development, and then to come back and say it's okay to develop this portion of the property, we're kind of inconsistent with our thought process and our city requirements relative to minimizing impacts when we have a lot of natural features next to residential. So that would be the bigger picture. Okay. Um, in terms of the site, um, the entire site has steep slopes, wetlands on the lower end, a lot of vegetation, and you have more residential areas or more houses in closer proximity to the buildings than you do site two on the other side of the community. I think that because of the topography here, it's going to be very difficult to do screening and mitigation if you spread the development out over the entire site. But you have to temper that with the fact that the buildings are scattered, they're not as tall, maybe a little bit more compact. But you are going to disturb kind of a wider corridor through the property. There's kind of a little ravine that runs through there. And when you get into that situation, you have to do some cut and fill balances so that the grading spread, spreads out a little bit more. I mean, that would be my concern with bringing the road all the way down to the southern part of the property. And this is why I'm a fan of the compact development. It's the same building square footage. It's just that they're in two buildings rather than six or eight buildings. I, w I would throw in a comment. It seems to me, um, and it's been a insightful discussion tonight, there are significant concerns about the impact of development on this particular parcel. And therefore, in my opinion, and particularly, we, I, we, we, certainly I have a sense that the ability to shield the southern component of the development is going to be more difficult than the northern component of the development, um, where the gentleman said that he'd be looking right out on the roof of an office building. Um, the phased approach to me makes more sense because of those concerns. And um, the one other thing I would mention is I think the comments made by the neighbors have been great. They're important. They have to be a big part of the process as it goes forward. But the owner of the property also has rights and some sense of right to develop because they own that property. So the question is can it be done in a way, in my opinion, that is pretty satisfactory to each of the parties and takes into account their um, relative interests. And therefore, I think the phased approach is a pretty good approach. Okay, thank you for your comments. That being said, uh, I want to kind of just go right down the line real quick and just kind of see where everybody's at. So, Commissioner, um, you can do start us off and kind of tell us what your thoughts are as far as would you be uh, for the rezoning or against the rezoning? Um, I would be, uh, like, uh, I, I agree that we are only. Um, voting on the zoning at this point, and um, I would be in favor of that as the city recommends. Um, I would say that the residents with their concerns for shielding, et cetera, and what plans would go in, um, you know, that would be talked about at a, at, uh, at a later date, and um, I would hope that any plans would take um, those residents' um, concerns into consideration. Thank you very much. So you would be for it, uh, Commissioner Frank. Yeah, I, I think I thought it was a great discussion, and it certainly made me more sensitive to the neighbors' concerns, which are very legitimate. I think uh, the, the the Mac folks have a legitimate interest in the development of the property, and they own it at the same time. And therefore, I'd be in favor of the recommendation made to rezone the northern component of this parcel, um, contingent on some of the considerations that have been talked about today. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, I would actually be against the rezoning. I just think it's not a suitable property for development. Um, being kind of in such a natural area, um, right against the edge of existing residential, there isn't any road between. It, it seems like an area that should just be left alone and, you know, as we've approved, allow Mac the you know rights to develop on the other fringe areas of their property. Okay, thank you. I think I've uh, addressed this 
ad nauseum. <laughs> um, I would be, I'm, kind of, I'm on the fence. I, I, would, uh, I would be in a favor for what the staff has recommended, but I'm not necessarily convinced that that is the best course. Um, we can, the phased phasing of it, we'll just bring it back to the table to us again, and it creates uncertainty uh, with developers, and it also creates uncertainty because, I mean, it will be a matter of public record right now that we talked about it, uh, with people that are wanting to uh, sell their homes or do, you know, various improvements to their homes that are on Tree Farm Road, like one of the gentlemen said. Um, he was uh, referencing, I think, uncertainty in the nature of a little bit different angle, but there is still uncertainty there. I, the, my, the big question that I have, or the big concern that I have is the runways and the overflight. And we're, we're saying we're, we're going north of runway 10R28L and the distance of 4,000 feet. And I guess uh, I don't, I'm trying to just kind of eyeball the distance. It's about the same, oh, it's a little bit more, about, but a little bit more on, on parcel two from on the other side, on the west side of uh, Flying Cloud Airport. I guess uh, if we're going to go north of one on one of them, you know, why not go north on the other? I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. But then again, you're limiting the whole, the parcel itself and the, the, the interest owners to be able to become, what I'm guessing is a little more self-reliant on uh, fundraising for uh, operations and, 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 and whatnot. Uh, I can't recall exactly the history of, uh, of this, but I do, um, from what I can remember, is I think, I, I can't remember if the MAC approached the city and wanted to work with it or if we approached the MAC. I guess that would be a question, who approached whom in wanting to work through this process, which has been over the course of some time and very open. Um, that, that's just kind of an aside question for me. But uh, I could go either way, but I would be in approval of what we see from staff. I'm just wondering if, it would, if it's limiting us a little bit. But just to hear, just to make sure I understand you correctly, you would approve it? I would approve, I would be in approval for what I see in front of me from staff. Okay. Okay, Mr. Franzen, do you need to, uh, do you have any other closing comments before we move on? I do not, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, I would vote, knowing kind of the backstory and knowing the details, I would vote for as well the rezoning um, but also know that when I when we start going through the site plans that uh, you know we really take a look on what we can do to help uh, alleviate some of the concerns that the neighbors have obviously if you put yourself in their shoes you would want the same thing um, and it would be my hope that we can work together it would be my hope that we can have um, a couple of neighborhood meetings, some town hall meetings to be able to discuss this, to be able to listen to their concerns and know that, uh, you know, we'll all get back together and we'll all discuss it and hopefully we can come to some sort of a, an agreement of things that work not only for you as the uh, airport commission but also for the people whose lives that this impacts. Um, okay, so with that being said, I think you heard me. With that being said, I will entertain a motion at this time. Mr. Chairman, move to close the public hearing. Second. A motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, let's see if I can make sure I have the, here we go. Mr. Chairman, move to recommend approval of the zoning district change from rural to airport office subject to the following conditions. Rezoning only that portion of the property located north of the runway 10R slash 28L line as depicted on figure C2. Prior to City Council review, MAC will provide a legal description for the portion of, par of partial six. Any site plan application will conform to all requirements of the City Code. Second. A motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Moving on to the last one. This is uh, MAC development parcel number seven. Uh, this is by the Metropolitan Airport Commission. Uh, the location is Flying Cloud Airport and the request is for a zoning district change from public to airport commercial on 3.17 acres. With that being said, will the, uh, the Airport Commission please move forward with their presentation. 
Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, uh, parcel number seven, uh, as we looked at previously, is adjacent to parcel number five um, at the entrance to the Super America. <coughs> we have looked at a retail concept for this particular site. Approximately 12,000 square feet. And uh, have a rendering for this one as well. Uh, the site is somewhat limited in size um, and access as well in order to provide the access and the uh, amount of parking it does limit uh, the available um, square footage for the potential development um, but similar to a couple of our other commercial parcels we are requesting uh, airport commercial uh, be the zoning that's uh, adopted for this particular parcel okay thank you very much mr Franz, you want to take us through the staff report please Mr. Chairman, the staff recommends approval of the rezoning to airport commercial on 3.17 acres. Uh, subject to any site plan application will conform to all requirements of the city code. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioners, any comments or concerns about parcel number seven? I had one question for city staff. I was just curious, is it true that this is currently a community garden site? That is correct. Has the staff um, potentially looked into finding other spots? Is it like a well used space? Uh, it is. And uh, the Parks and Recreation staff is aware of the uh, application to have something on the property, and they'll be looking at other locations to uh, provide this elsewhere in the city. Any idea how many people use that for the uh, gardening piece by chance? Just out of curiosity. Right now we have about uh, 80 gardeners at that site, uh, but uh, keep in mind we have leased this property from the MAC for a number of years, so it's no different than the athletic fields where they all have the same type of lease conditions. Do you feel confident that we can find another location within the city to be able to do that? Uh, it's going to be a challenge to find something this large, but you know maybe it's you know, satellite locations mm -hmm. for, right. you know, gardens. Right. Yeah, I mean, I've been there. I, I think that's a nice thing that, you know, is done, and it would be nice to be able to keep that going in some capacity maybe somewhere in the city. Okay, with that being said, uh, commissioners, do you have any comments or concerns about parcel number seven? Uh, just just one, one question for the MAC folks. Um, it really relates to all the parcels. So, um, once you begin the process and developers and you're talking to the developers and so on how will the coordination work between the different parcels and what kind of commercial gets on individual um, parcels versus others what i mean by that is are are you seeking variety in commercial property or retail property not three gas stations but just variety or is that something really that hasn't been addressed yet how does it get how does the development of the parcels get coordinated, I guess, over time? Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, we, we haven't really gotten to that phase yet. Um, my anticipation would be that we're looking for mixed development out there just because that's going to provide the, the best spread of revenue opportunities out there and, you know, not to have multiple, you know, gas stations competing against each other that will eventually drive one or two of them out of business. And so, our goal would be to look for the best kind of mixed combination of commercial development on these parcels. Okay, and certainly that would broaden the, the, the range of services available for residents and so on. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you very yep. much. Great question. Thank you very much. Commissioners, any other comments or concerns? No. Seeing that this is a, a open hearing, is there anyone out in the audience that has any comments or concerns specific to parcel number seven? If so, sir, please come forward. State your name, spell your last name, uh, and give us your address and tell us a little bit about your concern. I'm Patrick Brown, the other lamb. I live on 12661 Pioneer Trail, where the old tractor is. Everybody knows where that is. Mr. Brown, is that correct? Pardon? Is Patrick Brown, is that your name? Right. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Well, anyhow, when I pull out to the driveway, I had to move my driveway. They didn't allow any more driveways into Count Pioneer Trail, County Road 1, because of the speed limit. I have to look to the west. They come down that hill, and I really got to pull out of there fast. 
Now, you've never mentioned how they're going to get back to that property six. If you look on the map, you can't cross there. And I'm more concerned where the gardens are. My wife has a garden. She's going to dread losing it. I realize that's going to happen. We'll do what we can for you, sir. Yeah, but I don't see any need for that second driveway out of the east side there. That's in a blind spot. It's in a curve. It's on the edge of a hill. There's going to be death accidents there. I got hit on Red Ridge in Crosswalk on my bicycle five years ago. There's people do not stop for stop signs. They come down that road 45, 55 miles an hour. I don't see the need for that driveway. The way I understand it, the two Cleve buildings are going to be go out of there. Somebody sold them. They're going to be developed, but there's no need for that driveway coming out the east side. And that driveway going back to number six, we couldn't bring up that map going down there, but if they do develop that, it should be there where they go to their little fancy little hut. They could crumb in there right across from the Super America. Right. But that driveway there is a bad spot. So Mr. They'll Tom, never get out of there. Right. So so really what we're looking at here is just kind of an idea of what they may put there. This isn't necessarily what is going to go there. Okay. And when the time comes that um, the development has an idea of what really will go there and what they want yeah. to put in there, That'll come to this commission, and we can certainly talk about it at that time. All right. And I, I guarantee you the city will do their due diligence in coming up with, uh, you know, whether that driveway actually works, whether it doesn't, whether it impedes any kind of site yeah. issues or speed issues or anything like that. We'll take a look at it at that time. But I that's, appreciate your comments and concerns. Thank that's you the main much. thing that I've opposed against that. Right. I don't mind, but I don't think we need another drugstore. Right. <laughs> we got enough drugs in Eden Prairie now. Right. I don't think we need another drugstore, which it showed. But them two driveways, there's no place for them. All right. It's so hard to get out of my driveway, and I'm farther down the hill. Right. Duly noted. Thank you very much for your comments. Yeah. We appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else that has any comments or concerns specifically? Yes, sir. Can you uh, tell us your name and spell your last name and, and uh, your address, Leroy please? Leroy Jedlica, J-E-D-L-I-C-K-A, at 12501 Pioneer Trail. Uh, let me state this first. I am not against commercial development. At one time, we were considered a bedroom community. You know, no business. We do need business. But to give you a little update or go back into history our daughter got hit by a car and then I went before the uh, council and requested a hikeway and initially I was put down but I stayed with it and eventually they did let out bids for a hikeway on the north side which was an upgrade then one of the council members that lived on Woodridge requested a turning lane because impeding traffic and potential accidents, which was another upgrade. Then they came along with divided highways and four lane highway, which was another upgrade to so the traffic could flow. Now there were back cars backed up, I think, all the way to Pox Christie before they put in the, the extra lane. Now, if any of you go into Super America and try to get out of there, it, you gotta really watch it. Now, by putting more commercial there, I don't know how you're gonna handle the traffic coming out. You're gonna, it, 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 there's semis coming through here, trucks, every kind of a truck you can think of. And I, I have no idea how you're going to handle the traffic from up. But every time you upgraded it, you got better flow of traffic. This here is going to impede the traffic. That That is my big concern, is the traffic problems and accidents you're going to have. So wherever it goes from here, um, it's going to be up to you, but you will have traffic problems. There's no getting around it. And if, if any of you members go in there, in and out of the gas station, and find out what it's like, 
And once they start heading west, uh, they're coming fast, I mean east. And coming up the hill around that curve, they're also coming up fast. So that is my main concern, not against commercial development. Right. Okay, thank you. I thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. Especially. Thanks very much. Uh, keeping us safe. Thank you very much. Mr. Rue, do you have any comments specific to that or to that piece of property when it comes to uh, development, put roads in there, anything specific? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, this, you're talking about parcel seven, I presume, right? Right. Both of them. Um, yeah, it, obviously these are conceptual plans, but there doesn't look to be a lot of options on how you would access this um, this parcel, um, the one off the city Pioneer Trail portion there over by Super America would be uh, a more logical um, connection point. Um, look, it appears like it may have enough distance back, but um, to put the access off uh, of the county road portion would be um, something that the county would deal with and permit and uh, would look seriously at that access and the and the turn lanes needed and um, and if it's applicable as as uh, desirable sight lines and so forth. But um, yeah, I mean it's just at this point it's just conceptual. But I would say just one access off Pioneer Trail would probably be more desirable than than to have two of them, okay. uh, particularly one off the county road portion. Right. Okay. Thanks for your comments. I appreciate that. Is there anybody, uh, is there any other comments or concerns out from anyone in the audience? Yes, ma'am. And this is specific to parcel number seven, correct? Okay, thank you very much. Please state your name and spell your last name and your address, please. Carol Prom, P-R-O-M. I'm the wife. <laughs> and my husband didn't speak enough about the garden that I'm concerned with um, because I'm one of those 80 or so gardeners mm -hmm. that um, spend a lot of time up there and really enjoy that part of living in Eden Prairie. So for me, it's a quality of life thing. And I really enjoy it. I do it for health reasons, you know, and being able to produce your own food and stuff is really important to me. So Great. that's mostly what I'm concerned with. Well, Thank we you. Will, we will work to uh, resolve that problem and see if we can find another place here in the city that's close by that you can continue to do that. Well, right now I'm able to walk there, so that's my exercise. All right. So we'll do what we can, I but thank you very much. That. Thank you very much. Appreciate your concerns. Okay. With that being said, commissioners, do you have any other final comments before we move forward? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mr. Chairman, move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, move to recommend approval of the zoning district change from public to airport commercial on 3.17 acres, subject to the following condition. Any site plan application will conform to all requirements of the city code. Second. Motion, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. That concludes the metropolitan piece of it. Thank you very much. Um, and I do want to thank the, the members that came out tonight, the audience that came out tonight. This is uh, not done by any stretch of the imagination. There's much more to discuss, and I appreciate you all coming out. And I hope to see you out again as we continue to work through this, and hopefully we can address some of your concerns more specifically on what goes out on that site and what is built on that site so that we can somehow meet in the middle to make everybody happy. So thanks again for coming. I appreciate your time. Thanks again. So with that being said, Mr. Franzen, let's move on to the uh, planner reports if there are any for tonight. Uh, we have a uh, full agenda for February 10th, four variances. We have a variance for size and length of a dock on Bryant Lake. We have a request for additional signage on a bank building. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's maybe the Central Bank <coughs> building up off of Shady Oak Road. We have a request from Olympic Hills Golf Course to uh, build an accessory structure higher than 30 feet. They need to put up a golf net at the end of the driving range to protect mm -hmm. some houses on the south end. And we have a side yard setback for a pool on Crane Dance Drive uh, over behind the Eden Prairie. Okay, is that it? That's it. 
Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Members report. Anything new from the light rail? Uh, no, I don't have anything. Okay. Anything else from members report? No. Okay. Any continuing business? Any new business? If not, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.